Last week we looked at what? That it doesn't need any what? Doesn't need any what? Doesn't need any surface water. And that's because what? Its roots go r really deep. So it's not, it's not easily offended if it doesn't get a rain. Right? It's tapped into the source. It is strong. It's got that river of life that it's continually drinking from. Amen? So I want to look at another element of this today, and I'll just get right into the element. Remember, last couple times I've teased you until halfway through before I let you know what it's about. I'm just going to hit it right up the top of the head right now. And what, what, this element of the, the uh, palm tree that I want to look at today has to do with it bears its fruit higher than any other tree. And this is kind of cool. We'll, we'll look at some really really necessary elements of this today. And some of this, I, I, I believe we need to be stirred every time we open up the Word of God. Amen? Why is it a light? Because it shows us stuff that we can change. Amen? I want to be changed every day in the presence of God. So how am I going to be? I'm going to open up His Word. And I'm going to say, okay, show me, God. Show me. Not what I think I already know. Right? Show me something new here. Let me see where I can change. Because I want to. Amen? You know, if this isn't our attitude, or, or, or you know, we're not, I want to grow in this kind of an attitude. Because I, this is an incredible God. Sometimes I, I've, you sit back and you think about how perfect he is. He just, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with him at all. And this is who we claim to be as our God. And if this is true, we have to be impacted every time we acknowledge his presence. It's got to do something to us. Amen? And so I, I desire for, for every, every illumination to make a change. Amen? I, and I believe we can stand upon that. We can, that, that should be a comfort. Again, from, from uh, Psalm 23, why is his rod and his staff a comfort? Because it corrects us, right? It pulls us to him, and it lets us know when we're out of line. And what is that? That's a comfort. Have, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't remember feeling like my parents' correction of me when I was young was that I didn't feel really comforted in that. Did you all feel really comforted in that? <laughs> so, I don't know about you, but man, I got lit up pretty good a few times. But what I didn't realize is that comfort was going on because you know what? I know where I'm loved. I know where there's security because my parents established that in me. Amen? The thing about God is you have to submit yourself to his correction. But every time you do, every time, even if it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to make you uncomfortable about something or else change isn't taking place. Right? There's going to have to be some, uh, okay, I'm going to have to, okay, that might hurt a little bit. I might have to let that go a little bit. But right, when we came to God in the first place, he said, give me your life and I'll give you mine. But you had to give up yours, right? So anyway, I want to look at this, uh, this flourishing because this is what God has called us to. And again, I have this overall thing that I want to accomplish is I want us as a church, as a body, to not just be introspective, but to be uh, extroverts spiritually. Amen? So that what we're getting from God isn't just about us, but we're flourishing. We're providing for somebody else. So we're going to continue to look at this. There's a significance in the bearing high fruit. So that first blank would be high. There's different, some, some different ways I want to look at this. Is part of it is it's, it's above any other fruit. It's, it's, it's unique in that it's going to be, there's, there's no other fruit that can come close to it. Okay, so the fruit that we bear, 
you, you just really can't compare it to others. And it better be higher than any other. You know, how many have, have had uh, fruit in your life that is not reflective of higher things? How many, you might have some even in your life right now, and I think if we all were really honest, we'd say, well, there's some stuff. You know what I really like about, uh, about some of these things is, is this is something where God is calling us to, and he doesn't hold us, he, he's, he's not trying to beat us up for where we are at the moment. Amen? And sometimes we still have this old man with some fruit that's not great. You know, we might be German or something. Roger and I are German, right? He's a Richter and I'm a Beerman. And, uh, you know, if, if you travel over to Germany, it cha it's, it's something changes when you go across that German border. People are kind of stoic and they're kind of gruff and they're kind of, you know. And so you can look into your ancestry and so you can say, well, this is how I am because I'm German. And God says, I give you a different heritage. Right. Amen? Amen. So quit hanging on to that and take up what I'm giving you. Amen? All right. I've rabbit trailed too much here. Let me go ahead and... Oh. Let me go ahead uh, with this passage. And this is just going to be a continual passage. Psalm 92, 12 through 15. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that are planted... In the house of Jehovah shall flourish in the courts of our God. Again, you go back and say, shall flourish. Okay. So that, that means if, if I am not experiencing flourishing, and we're going we're gonna to look at this because there's a necessity to flourish. And we're going to look at there. There's a necessity to bear fruit. It's, it's, it's a very serious thing. Amen. So if these things aren't taking place, we can, we can make adjustments. God can help us to make adjustments. I want to be planted in the courts. Amen? I want to have my roots going deep into Him. And there's going to be evidence of it. All right. Um, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flowering to show that Jehovah is upright. He is my rock and no unrighteousness is in Him. I just think it's really interesting that the exposition of God requires us. Is that kind of an amazing thing? You know, as great as he is, he has designed it so that his glory is shown through us. That's kind of amazing, isn't it? So there, it's really necessary for me to take some of this stuff serious and for me to say, ah, God's glory is not just, we don't just, you know, I, I've wondered about that sometimes when I'm singing a song of God, I glorify you. Oh, I glorify. Is that song glorifying him? Well, it can. But what he really wants is your life. Amen? So that you're, you're making a nice little confession when you're singing the song. But it better be backed up by a life. Amen? <laughs> okay. Like the palm tree, and I'm going to go ahead and make this statement, which is, since I've already been, been going into this, you'll know exactly what I'm saying, even though it's a long sentence, okay? As ability to withstand the strong winds is established with roots extending deep to the ever-flowing river of life, Fruit is born far above that of any other species. So when you become this new creation in Christ, now your fruit becomes a higher level. It's a better fruit. There's none like it. You can't relate it to any other. It's high. It's like the palm tree. Amen? So, the purpose of acquired nourishment and its resulting strength is for flourishing. Bearing healthy, refreshing, and life-giving fruit. 
And here is the key, and this is kind of, I'm going to kind of set on this a little bit. Existence is validated with this bearing. And without it, there can be no extended assurance of life. Okay, this is kind of a little bit heavy here that I want to, I want to sit on because there's the positive and there's also... You know, everything about God, there's the positive side, and then there's also the consequences, right? How many know that salvation is really wonderful? Isn't it wonderful to be saved? But did you know that as good as God in is in his salvation, what really makes salvation wonderful is that there's a consequence if you're not. Right? What's going to happen? Going to hell. For eternity. So that makes salvation no longer an option, right? If you have a brain in your head. I'm not being too mean to... But, but real, I mean, if you could really see the difference. You know, if you could really see the real option and, and your, your brain was actually functioning, you know, and all the new... What are the... Neurons. There we go. <laughs> all, the, all, the, all, the, all the little electronic things are going on up there and everything's firing and everything. And they say, oh, okay, salvation. No, that's, that's my choice. Right? <laughs> so, when you begin to look at the options once you come into salvation, you, know, you say, I'm going to go through those courts, I'm going to praise God, I'm going to get up close to God, but then you begin to realize that no, I'm going to have to actually be planted in Him, and then my ability to remain there is going to be going to require Because it's kind of like it's kind of like Hunter is is driving now, and sometimes he'll get in, and um, he'll get in the car, and he'll try to uh, put it in drive. And I'll look over there, and and you know there's a tachometer, right? And the tachometer is setting on zero. I say, Hunter, uh, you have to start it first. Right? Because there's something that indicates whether it's on or not. And every time it's on, well, as long as the tachometer's working, but, you know, every time it's on, there's going to be evidence, isn't there? So every time you are planted, every time you're part of the foliage, you know, I was thinking about this, God likes likes plants in his house. You know? How many, you know, we, we get, we try to, we do fake ones, right? But he, he likes real plants in his house. But he doesn't just like plants. Remember when Jesus was going down the road and he saw the fig tree? What happened when it didn't bear fruit? He said, I, I don't like, I don't like trees that don't bear fruit. In fact, what's going to happen? They're going to dry up from the roots. You might think you have a relationship with God, and you might glory in Him, and you might want to say, well, all, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's just me and God. And He says, no. He says, because if your roots are in me, you're going to bear fruit. In fact, for you to even exist and continue existing, there has to be fruit. Amen? This is not an optional thing. You will bear fruit. <laughs> so do you understand that statement a little bit better now? Existence is validated. Okay. You actually get to be here, right? You get to exist here. And you get to have an extended stay. <laughs> how, many, how, many would have, how terrible would it, would it be to get into the courts of the Lord, to be enjoying His presence? To be blessed by his, the awesome glory of God. And then to have somebody come along and say, Oh, got to go, got to go. Can't, can't stay. Right? How is that going to happen? If you're not bearing, you got to bear some fruit. Amen? Amen? Luke 3, 8 through 9. Therefore, bring forth fruits worthy 
of repentance. And do not begin to say within yourselves, we have Abraham for our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Remember we were talking about that a little bit earlier. <laughs> uh, Roger and I are German. That's our heritage. He's saying, forget about who you think you are or any kind of other qualifying thing that you have. The only thing that's going to identify you, it's not Abraham. And even a claim to know to, that you can say, well, 20 years ago, I, I became a Christian. You know, and, and there's... There, <laughs> I'm coming straight up against some teaching that's prevalent in the world today about the power of grace. And grace is amazing, right? It doesn't matter how great our sin is. God brings us right back in. But there's an element of actually experiencing the, the blessings and actually being a part of, of what God's doing that requires me to bear. Amen? Amen? There's a direct correlation between these two things. And it doesn't matter what, what my claim is on anything else. He says, well, if that's really legitimate, then there will be fruit. So really, you can go back and say, okay, the person that really is a Christian, that really is operating in grace, will produce fruit. And that will be, that will be the determining factor whether or not they really made that commitment in the first place. Ooh, that's kind of heavy, isn't it? But it looks to me like that's what's being said here, right? And when I, when I come up against something that's being said, and it's the word of God, which has to go? What I might have thought otherwise. Amen? What is Repentance. That's when we turn from one thing and we go to the other, right? He said, bring forth fruits worthy. What are fruits that are worthy of repentance? That means that they actually back up what was repented of. It does no good to repent of something and then just to keep producing the fruit of unrighteousness, right? He said, bring forth fruit worthy that actually demonstrates that your car is on, right? For I say to you that God is able to raise up children. Okay, I, and now also the ax is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bring forth good fruit is what? Cut down and cast into the fire. So these are trees that have been planted, that actually have roots. So we've gotten that far, right? We talked about having roots that go deep, that don't need the surface. The roots are going down. Now, the legitimacy of your, occupation, or your occupants <laughs> is going to be validated by your fruit. Amen? <laughs> Everybody just... Hoops and hollers. This is really exciting stuff, right? You know what? I'd rather know, wouldn't you? I'd rather, I'd rather have the opportunity to say yes. Amen? To be planted in the courts is to be identified alone by fruit that is born there. Other fruit that may have been produced in the past will be removed as roots remain in the spirit. You cannot remain in a place of connected to the Spirit of God without Him rubbing off on you. Amen? Remember we used to do these, these uh, uh, experiments in science. Is it osmosis? Is that what it is? You know, they give you that, they give you that membrane and you, you see what passes through it, you know? Is, is it osmosis? So... So certain things will pass through that membrane and, and some things won't pass through. But if you're going to actually be connected into God, His stuff is going to pass through. Amen? And the, the, the fruit 
of that old man, of that old German, of that old Richter, of that old Beerman. Amen? If it's anything other than in compliance and invalidation of the Spirit of God, what is it going to do? It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fall off. It's not going to be there anymore because there is this fruit that will, will come if you're tapped in. So, again, there's a comfort in this that I can know, oh, I don't have to remain like this. Amen? I can, I can be changed. I can, I can become like the Spirit. Of, where the Spirit of the Lord is, what is there? There's liberty and there's freedom. Amen? Amen. Matthew seven sixteen through 20. You shall know them by what? Their fruits. You know, I've heard people say, well, you know, I really like these people because they, they just don't judge anybody. You know? And you could say, well, that's good. We don't, we don't, we're not judging anybody. But your fruits really declare who you are. And you're not ever going to get around that. I'm not going to be the one that brings the punishment or the condemnation. But if there's fruit that is other than godly fruit, you know where it's rooted into. Right? So it's the, uh, let's see, where am I? Um, you know then by the fruits, do men gather grapes from thorns or figs? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit. Right? You don't say, well, I'm the only one that doesn't have to bring forth good fruit. That's because I'm tired today. No, it just sprouts out of you. Right? If you're tapped into the good source, you're going to bear good fruit. Amen? But a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruits. So you should maybe underline cannot too. Nor can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that does not bring forth good free fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. It doesn't say by their knowledge, by their ability to... Ability to uh, to expound on things and to be eloquent. It doesn't, it doesn't turn it into a competition of accomplishments. What is it simply? By their fruit. Right? So bottom line with God, it's your fruit. Right? And I like, you know... The flourishing has kind of a glory side to it, but I, th I th also believe that you have to look at the necessity of there only being good fruit to flourish. If you're going to flourish in the courts of God, you don't go in there with thistles, right? You don't go in there with junk and think that you're going to grow this stuff in there. Now God says, no, in my courts, only this stuff grows, right? He's really pretty particular. Have you ever been around somebody that's just really particular about their, their house and everything just not, not a speck of dust not a, God's really particular about what he has in his courts that's why grace is so amazing because he will fix us every time we let us let ourselves be amen he will cause us to be but we have to be hooked into him and every time we are he produces in us. Amen? Spirit's fruit identified as the high fruit of the planted. <laughs> okay, so what is that fruit going to look like? And we're just going to look at this quickly. Galatians 5, 22 through 25. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, Goodness, faith, meekness, self-control, good looks, big bank account, lots of brains. 
Doesn't ever say any of that, does it? Doesn't, does it? What are these kinds of things that are, it's talking about? It all, this is all stuff about how we treat each other, isn't it? Amen? <laughs> you know, it, 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 th- there might be a, something that we actually act out. And what is taking place? Something is being consumed by somebody else that it was me that gave it to them. Amen? Why is it called fruit? What is it about fruit? You eat it, don't you? So that when I bear, and, and, and we're going to look at something very critical here. When I bear the fruit of the Spirit... I'm not losing anything. I'm just giving something to somebody else. Amen? And it's not even, it's not even me. It's the Spirit that's bearing that fruit. Right? It's the fruit of the Spirit. And it's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control against such things there is no law so what is it saying that as long as these things are going on nobody's going to have anything against you as a result of these I mean you know you might have a whole religion that rises up and doesn't like it because you are pure <laughs> you know, and, and wants to come against you but they don't have anything legitimate because you acted in, in love right There is no law, but those belonging to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So if we're saying, okay, I have to bear this kind of stuff, and if there's anything else that's coming out of me, it, it would be very easy to gauge it, wouldn't it? To go in here and say, okay, is, it, is, is this spirit fruit? And you can begin to, you can begin to align your, your whole life around that. And again, the key isn't, isn't to isn't try to control it yourself. But you can begin to say, oh, I need to get back into the spirit if I see something other than this. Right? I don't try to say, okay, I'm not going to think those thoughts towards somebody. Okay, I'm not going to act wrong about somebody. Okay, I'm not going to withhold my good, kind acts from somebody because of my own self-determination. Because that's partly what the world tries to do, doesn't it? And in fact, it tries to impose it upon our nation right now and say, okay, we're going to make you do that. If you've made a lot of money, we're going to take it and make you do acts of kindness. This isn't how it happens. And it's, a, it's really a good reflection of how we need to be careful in ourselves is that we don't feel imposed upon by something. No, we, we recognize this, this fruit that might not be right. And we say, okay, I have to get into the spirit then because I need to change. And the change is going to come from my roots being in the spirit. Amen? But I better see some fruit because I don't want to be cut and put into the fire <laughs> amen you know buddy was talking about the fear of the lord sometimes i think we have to get really serious about this kind of stuff amen he's talking to the church he's talking to the trees amen this isn't something we hold back and say well i think i'll think about that for a while you're on the edge of a cliff somebody's trying to give you a hand and let you keep from falling off the cliff well i think i'll think about that no Right? I'm, I'm grabbing the hand. <laughs> okay. You guys remember uh, well, let, let, me just, let me just reiterate this really quickly. The fruit is going to be something that is consumed, and this is where the flourishing comes, that is consumed in another person as a result of me being tapped into the Spirit. Amen? You see this? 
Okay, I'm going to look at something else here now. Because there's another side of, there's another part of the fruit of the palm tree that we're going to look at here. And, I, and it was interesting because I, I just Googled this and I found something that, that I thought was kind of interesting. You, you remember a few years ago, and I, I already, I think it was back when I was a kid maybe. Remember there was a term that, uh, eat my heart out or eat your heart out. Is it eat your heart out? Well, they, there's both, though, so don't laugh at me too hard because it's eat my heart out, too. Uh, but what, what, what's happening when you eat somebody's heart out? You're actually going to the core of who they are, and you're compromising it, right? Or somebody can be just totally overcome by something, and they're eating their heart out, you know. Uh, so I thought about this because there's another side. Have you ever heard of the heart of palm? It's actually a delicacy. I think probably knows about it. Uh, it's used in salads. It's kind of like a vegetable. And uh, let me just read this statement here. The harvesting of heart of palm, a delicacy in salads, also poses a threat because it is derived from the inner core of the tree and harvesting kills the tree. So remember I was talking about the fruit of the Spirit is something that is born by the Spirit through us. Amen? What the world wants to do is come eat our heart out. We're still being consumed. Something is being consumed, but it's us. Amen? It's not the Spirit, it's us. And they come, because the palm tree bears fruit up there, and it will also bear fruit by dying when its core is cut out of it. Right? So I want to look, look at this passage in Ephesians 5. When the heart, which will produce the fruit, our tree requires our heart for the Spirit to flow through it to produce the fruit that will be consumed for the betterment of somebody else. Amen? Amen? But when that very heart, which produces that fruit, is, convert, uh, is consumed by perversions. Because this is what will happen. The world wants to come and eat our heart out to where we cannot produce the fruit. Amen? Yeah. It compromises and corrupts the ability to produce required identifying fruit. So you're there for a while, and all, but, but you become... How did these things happen? Let's look at this passage. Ephesians 5, 5 through 12. For you know this, that no fornicator or unclean person or covetous one who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Any. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the children of disobedience. He's not saying they're not children. He's saying they're children. But what are they? Children of what? Disobedience. Why? Because they've allowed their heart to be, to listen to vain words, right? So they've actually been consumed. Somebody else has been eaten on them, eating their heart out. Therefore, not, do not be what? Partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now... You are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable to the Lord. What proves your life is acceptable to God? Fruit. Right? And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. Okay, I'm, I'm going to kind of hit a few things. How can the world consume us in the least? And here's where I think we're at a disadvantage. And, and you know, 
I, I believe that there's nothing n- new today. It might be more focused. It might be more accessible. But there is a prevalence of accessibility to having your heart eating, eaten out. It's talking here, it's talking about no fornicator, nor unclean person, okay, sexual, just not nice, right? And then an idolater. What would an idolater be? That's somebody that, that has other things in their life held up as idols that are gods bigger than God, right? It's kind of covering a big spectrum of things here, isn't it? Okay? It's, we could take that personal and we could say, okay, if that's, if that's something I need to deal with in my life, I qualify for that directly. But he's talking about don't be partakers with them. How is my heart going to be eaten out by fornicators, by unclean people? If I partake with them, how, how can I partake of those things with them? How many of us are exposed to entertainment? Right? And sometimes it's really funny stuff. Even somebody with profanity, can, it can sound funny. You know what I mean? And how is our heart being eaten? How are we being compromised in our ability for the Spirit to bear fruit in our life? Sometimes by partaking in, in a flat-out fornicator, a flat-out unclean person, we're not doing that with them, but we're partaking with them by observing them and letting it entertain us. Right. Amen? Yeah. What did Jesus say? He said, if you just think about these things, you've already done them. If you're just being entertained by somebody else doing them, you're partaking with them, aren't you? Did you know that you can be in a car with somebody that that has dope on them? And you could have just been catching a ride. What happens? You go to jail too, right? By association. You might not have even known it was in there. You're going to jail too, right? This very same thing is happening. If you're sitting in the room... Nobody, everybody else has gone to bed. You're partaking of something that is unclean in the least. What's happening? It's not just you doing this. Your heart is being eaten, right? Because you bear fruit all the time. It's either fruit of the Spirit or it's fruit that is consuming you personally. Amen? Amen? And if it's like a palm tree, if it's eating your heart, you're not going to be able to produce the fruit of the Spirit. And what's going to happen? You're going to be cut down. You're going to be cast into the fire. All right? So if we're looking at this wonderful concept of flourishing, you have to look at this, right? Amen? Because God doesn't work with impurities. No, that, that source of life that's in Him, when it comes up through, it's got to stay pure. If the heart gets cut out, if it gets consumed by the world, then there is no fruit of the Spirit. And there's, rather than being flourishing, rather than bringing something good, you cut down yourself. And everybody said, Amen. <laughs> okay, I've just got one more passage here. Has this been good? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Again, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to hit this up front by the correction side because every time there's, every time there's a, a, an opportunity for repentance, for, for saying, however you want to help me change with this, God, change me, yeah. it's positive. Yeah. Amen? Every time there's an, a salvation invitation and somebody comes forward, they are separated from death to life. Amen? Yeah. I believe every time we open up His Word, there's an opportunity for a, an entrance into greater Awareness of God's light in our life. Amen? Amen. To be planted and flourish is to bear fruit that is Christ to the world. Here's where it should hit our hearts. Here's where we should be broken before it. We say, God, how could I do anything other than this? Amen? 
God, I have to, I have to be broken before this because I, I recognize that other people have missed out on you because I've allowed my heart to be consumed by the world. Does this make sense? Colossians 1, 27 through 28. For to them God would make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the nations, which is Christ in you. <laughs> this is somebody planted. Amen? The hope of of glory whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom so that we may present every man what perfect in Christ Jesus we've been called to flourish this 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 element of it is uh, 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 we got to take it to heart is that this isn't optional. Salvation comes with a great responsibility. And to, to remain in, in a place of favor in God requires me to become a giver of love. And, and I have something to do with its purity and its ability to bear in my choices of what I'm going to partake of, of this life. What I partake of can eat me or it can produce in me. If I'm partaking of the Spirit, it's going to produce in me. If I'm, produ if I'm partaking of the world or I'm allowing it, it's going to consume me and there's going to be nothing left. Amen? God wants us to grow up in Him. He wants us to be like a palm tree planted in the courts. Amen? I love how we've gone into this because we, we, we were talking about going through the courts, the gates that have been opened, right, in praise, that we can go into the courts. But I love that it gets deeper than that. We get planted in the courts. Amen? Amen? we get put into a place where our roots go right into the source and we're no longer tossed around on every wave but we're secure in him we have our place secured in him and then we will produce we will produce fruit amen hallelujah and we don't have to be afraid of anything we just have to stay planted we just have to stay hooked in. We have to keep going through those gates. Yeah. If there's anything in me that's other than, that's unclean in the least, if there's anything in, in me, I'm thankful that repentance didn't happen just once. It can happen continually. Because yeah. I continually say, okay, now I'm going back to my source. Where is the turning to? It's to God. If I need to turn away from something, I don't just turn away from it. I have to turn towards him amen I can be strong the hope of the world is us I know it's Christ but it's us planted in him it's us separated from the world it's us not partaking of the world amen with our hearts remaining pure before him not eaten by the world amen Hallelujah. Come in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you that, that there is truth in your word that can change us, Father God. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we go through those, those, those gates today and we give you praise and honor and Lord we lay down our hearts and we lay down our lives and, and we lay down uh, our flesh before you Father God and we, we allow our flesh to be crucified <laughs> so that we can live in the courts of our God hallelujah and I thank you that we've given, been given a heritage and you oh God 
that separates us from our past. That no longer do we have a connection to our past that we identify with. That you've given us a new heritage in you. That when we're tempted to identify with fruit that is anything other than the Spirit's fruit, we can go back to your word and we can say, no, this is who I am. I am in Christ. Thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph over those things that would eat my flesh, that it eat my heart out. Thanks be unto God who causes me to triumph and to grow up tall and to bear my fruit higher than all the fruit of this world. It causes me to be able to live beyond myself and to be able to, to be Christ to the world, to bring hope to this world. Father, I thank you that, that you've called each one of us to this that you passionately desire for each one of us to be this, Father God. You, you passionately desire to show your glory through each one of us, Father God. So we take this opportunity, Lord, to repent before you. Father, to, to allow your spirit to quicken, to to, to uh, con convict our hearts, Father God, to, to, to illuminate those places that might be dark in us, Father, to anything in us that is, is being consumed by the world, is being an inhibitor of the flow of your spirit, of, of, the, of the flow of life that needs to go up to the high places and cause us to bear fruit. Lord, we thank you for that. And Lord, we very humbly right now, without, without trying to, to be religious at all, we just humbly present ourselves before you, Father, and, and say, God, we, more than anything in our life, we desire to be rooted and grounded in love to bear fruit that, that brings you glory. And for those that we would encounter our, in our life that will only know you through us, they won't miss out on it because we've been eaten up by something else. Lord, I pray that you would quicken this to our hearts. We do humbly take our place before you right now. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We go to the source. We go to the river of life. Father, every moment that we're hooked into you, we will bear. Hallelujah. Lord, I see right now in this place a, a, a wonderful vineyard where there is no wondering about what kind of trees we are, Lord God. It's evident on our branches. Hallelujah. That there's, no, that there's no place for bitterness. That there's no opportunity for the works of the flesh to be manifest. That there's no opportunity for there to be uncleanness in the least. Because every moment that we're hooked into your spirit, every moment that we're pursuing you every moment that worship is our life we are bearing and it's obvious where we might have responded in sensitivity where we might have responded and retaliated in our flesh somehow love comes out instead we say oh God that's so awesome that's so awesome I can be this new creation in Christ Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this. So good to just hang out in your presence. Help us to know how to talk to you in a more and more real way, Father. Separate us from religious things that would cause us to just be 
held in, in a bondage of some kind. Help us to open up before you in reality and for repentance to be our life. Continual turning towards you. God, I give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Alrighty. We have uh, the lunch right after this. So everyone, if you didn't know about that already, everybody's welcome. We're going to tear down the chairs and put the tables up and eat some food. And then... Um, Tomorrow night is the ladies' Bible study here, so we changed it from Tuesdays to Mondays, so now it's going to be every other Monday. Uh, here at 7 o'clock, and then Wednesday we are continuing in the John Bevere's Honors Reward, so that's going to be good. So come to that, and then Friday we'll have prayer here at 6 o'clock, and uh, anything else? Oh, in October, October, the first weekend of October on that Saturday, I think it's the 6th, that is, um, we are going to have our youth garage sale type thing. Um, it's going to be a car wash, garage sale, bake sale, do trio thing. So we're going to have it set up on the other side of the parking lot, sort of, because the other church meets here later on. So we'll have that in the morning. So just so you know, you can start bringing things um, to sell in the garage sale to donate to the youth. It's for the youth fund so that our youth can go to uh, summer camp next year. So, it's going to be great. So, okay, everyone stand. Greet someone, stick around, help, uh, help with the chairs, if you will. Oh, I didn't know you. I haven't talked to you. Just, you're, you're not dismissed. Nobody can leave. <laughs>